It was a beautiful day on June 3, 1998 for the residents of Eskied, Germany. With less than 7,000 residents, the people of the city had grown accustomed to the silence that filled their streets. Except for the constant noise from the trains that passed the Hamburg-Hanover railway line, the small town enjoyed total tranquility. But all of that will change a few hours into the morning. In 1998, one of the worst train accidents in German history occurred, killing over 100 people and injuring another 190. The Eski train disaster ranks as one of the worst high-speed rail accidents in the history of the world. The train involved had left Munich in 1998 set for Hamburg, a distance of almost 400 miles. However, just a few minutes before reaching Hamburg, the train will derail and crash into a bridge killing almost half of the passengers on board. This would result in the s train disaster, a case that would baffle investigators for years. The Intercity Express could easily pass as Germany's first modern high-speed train. How then did this masterpiece crash into a road bridge? Welcome to Dark History, where we unravel the most disastrous events in history. If you want to support the channel, consider subscribing and like this video. On June 3, 1998, the Intercity Express of the Deutsche Bahn AG was a train set to travel from Munich to Hamburg. The train left the station with 287 passengers and six crew members, scheduled to stop at Augsburg, Nuremberg, Fulda, Kassel, Göttingen, Würzburg, and Hanover before finally stopping at Hamburg. At exactly 10.30 a.m., the train stopped at Hanover, only to continue its journey northwards in a few minutes. Less than 40 minutes and 80 miles away from Hamburg and just four miles south of central Eskied, the train plunged to its death. Before the accident, the train had been traveling at 124 miles per hour, and around 10.57 a.m., a tire from the first passenger car tore through the cabin floor. This snapping resulted in the tire being stuck between two unoccupied seats. This incident was noticed by Mr. Dittman, who was sitting opposite the unoccupied seats with his son and wife. Worried that something major had gone wrong with the train, Mr. Dittman and his family abandoned their compartment to find the conductor. Mr. Dittman found the conductor and explained how the large piece of metal almost hit his wife and son. Dittman asked the train to be stopped. The conductor refused. According to company policy, the risk had to be properly assessed before an emergency stop could be triggered. Mr. Dittman and the conductor made their way back to the affected car. However, as they walked down, the train began swaying violently from one side to another. At this time, the tire had broken off the wheel guide, blocking the entrance area to the compartment. The swaying continued, and since the wheels were no longer embedded in the wheel guide, it bumped across the rail still at full speed. While all of these happened, the conductor still refused to stop the train. During a later investigation, Mr. Dittman admitted that he didn't see the emergency brake that was right in his compartment. Just as Dittman and the conductor were about to take a closer look at the armrest that the tire tore through, the train crash occurred. The train swerved off the tracks, racing underneath the bridge on its right. This initial crash led to the death of two railway workers, before it ran into several trees that eventually stopped the train. But this wasn't all. In an unfortunate turn of events, the bridge collapsed on the train cars 5 and 6, reducing them to around 150 millimeters high. Naturally, every passenger in these cars was reduced to nothing, but it was about to get even worse. The train tracks were now blocked by the fallen bridge, causing the remaining cars to be trapped in a zigzag pattern. Almost immediately, car 7, the restaurant car, the service car, and a number of first-class cars derailed, slammed into the big pile of rubble. While all of these happened, the front power car of the train cut itself off and continued to travel. It suddenly came to a halt right after it passed the Eskied railway station, sustaining only minor damage. This crash created a sound that altered everyone around. In fact, witnesses described the sound as horribly loud, with some residents thinking it was an airplane accident. Immediately, nearby residents rushed to the scene and notified the authorities. The accident was first seen by Miss Carl and her husband, Mr. Carl. Miss Carl, who was 50 years old at the time, lived just 20 meters away from the rail tracks. She recalls sitting in the kitchen with her husband when they heard a deafening crash tear through the entire house. 
The house shook violently, which caused a coffee cup to fall off the table. Shocked, the couple stepped outside. What they saw was incredible. A large train that had turned into a rubble of torn metal, debris, and human bodies. At exactly 11.02 a.m., the police declared the accident an emergency, and it would need over 1,000 rescue workers to help out. The passengers in the front power car and first cars of the train were fortunate, with most passengers sustaining minor injuries. However, the major casualties were the passengers seated at the rear of the train. 99 passengers in the train and two railway workers died, bringing the total death toll to 101. However, only 96 of the victims would be identified by the police, and the last five remained unidentified due to the extent of their injuries. Fortunately, despite the loss of over 100 lives, the fact that the train was only 44% filled is an interesting coincidence. Experts have claimed that if the train was any fuller, more casualties would definitely have been reported. Five days after the crash, the authorities began clearing off the accident site. Evidence was gathered, causing the investigation process to begin immediately. Interestingly, the investigators had discovered an amusing fact a day after the accident. About 3.7 miles away from the site of the accident, there were missing chunks of concrete, leading the investigators to suspect that someone or something had caused the train to go off track. As the investigation progressed, things slowly started to look promising. First and foremost, the three-piece wheels on the train were not in the best condition. For every rotation the train makes, the metal tire compresses into the shape of an oval. The more rotations the train went on, the more likely it became for the metal tires to develop evident cracks. At the time of the accident, the metal tire of the ICE-1 was 854 millimeters in diameter just a few millimeters shy of the approved 862 millimeters. Also, the tires weren't regularly checked because after the accident, investigators revealed that the tires should have been changed at 890 millimeters. Three years after the accident in 2001, three engineers were charged to court and blamed for not properly testing the tires. However, this trial was never completed. The spokesman for the relatives of the victims, Mr. Lowen, argued that the engineers weren't the guilty ones. He told the court that instead he wanted to see the board members of the train company in court. This would eventually lead to chaos in court, with lawyers exchanging violent words at one another. The trial was consequently cut short, and the three lawyers were required to pay a fine of 10,000 euros each. Also, in 2008, the Deutsche Bahn paid 32 million euros to relatives of the dead and the survivors, and the CEO at the time publicly apologized for the accident. Just a week after the accident, the DB banned the three-piece wheel service and worked tirelessly on developing a better and improved system for the trains. The first passenger car, which developed minor damages, was donated to the German Federal Agency for Technical Relief, and was also used to shoot National Geographic's Seconds from Disaster. The front power car was repaired and placed on another train, returning it back to service. One of the survivors, Mr. Bausch, built a garden in honor of the train accident victims in 2000. To date, the small memorial garden sits in his backyard and attracts thousands of visitors each year. The official memorial for the victims was also unveiled in 2001, and it features 101 cherry trees, which represents every victim that died. Their names are written on the gate, right beside a poem, immortalizing them forever. It's been over 23 years since this tragic incident, but its memories remain fresh in the minds of those affected. The Eski train disaster has now become a tragedy etched in the history of the small town, and also the history of Germany. I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, please like and subscribe. See you next time.